You were saying you come out walking a lot. Uh-huh. What do you get from it on a day like today? Just, uh, do you know what it sounds so stupid, but just... It seems like the fresh air now, actually. I, just, I, don't, I don't know what it is, but it's just, there's something that obviously kind of just relaxes the mind, to be honest. That's what I feel anyway. It's just a nice, you know, it's, like you say, it's a beautiful day, you know, kids are playing and getting on, you know. <laughs> everything's, <laughs> everything's good, you know, so. Sunshine helps everything. Oh, this might be nice just down here, actually, mm. just by the water. This episode of Speaking of Suicide, I'm speaking to Dylan. Dylan heard our shout out for anyone who would like to share their story, and so he got in touch. Just a reminder, Speaking of Suicide podcast is designed to be frank, open and honest. That doesn't always make it easy listening, so if this is too much, just press pause. I'm Penny Stewart, and this episode has been sponsored by David and Daniel at D&D Paving Limited. It was D&D Paving Limited that kicked off the whole Speaking of Suicide podcast series, so a big thanks to them for their ongoing and unwavering support for what we're doing. Speaking of Suicide is made in collaboration with and in support of Mikey's line, so I'll give you their contact details at the end of the podcast. This is not a bad day to be sitting by the River Ness, is it? No, it's probably one of the sunniest days we've had in months, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> it's absolutely beautiful. We're both squinting, squinting at the light, just sparkling off the water. Yeah, it'll be raining in 20 minutes, though. <laughs> <laughs> Dylan, I'm interested to, to kind of mine into what, what made you stop and think, actually, yeah, I'm going to share my story with the Speaking of Suicide guys. What? I th- I think um, everyone's got a story, you know, and everyone, I guess, has been through troubles of some sort, you know, and I guess my point of view was speaking to yourself, you know, was to basically say that everyone's okay to speak up, and if, you know, if they feel they want to speak up, then they should, you know, there's no judgment from anyone, you know, I, I feel that, you know, especially within the Inverness area, suicide rates are very high and I think you know as a collective we need to I guess stick together and you know help each other out pull each other to dark places you know and just I don't know it's just I think um, just to basically yeah just if you're feeling down I mean if you can speak about it and you know hopefully we can all help each other get out of darker places and move on to brighter futures you know so it, it it is an area um, up here where the suicide rate is is high, and unfortunately, we're often hearing about young guys like yourself who have taken their lives. Have you had first hand experience of of pals doing that? Yeah, I mean, I've had I mean, I've had two or three close, and I've obviously had a few that I've known acquaintances as such. These boys were very or men were very happy outgoing you know, you wouldn't think any otherwise. I mean, one of them, Ryan obviously passed away, it must be eight, nine years ago. I seen him three days before his passing, you know, and he seemed fine, which was a real hard one to hit because when we all went to his funeral, it was, you know, all the boys that we'd hung about for years were there, you know, all back together. You know, seeing his grandparents and his mother and that have to bury their son was just the most heartbreaking thing in the world. And I don't wish that upon anyone. And I just wish that, you know, if himself and, you know, people like Michael and other people had the chance to maybe speak up and feel, tell people how they were feeling inside, we might still have them today. And that's the the honest brutality about it is, you know, once they're gone, they're gone. Their memory will always live on, but the thing is, you know, sometimes it's too late. And if we can try and prevent that, then hopefully we'll bring the suicide rate down and you know and just basically hopefully have people you know in happier places i know it's easier said than done which is you know but if we can hopefully start getting men and women to start talking how they're feeling then hopefully we can start making a difference day by day and person by person now the reason we're sitting here talking today is because i think you're a a great example of someone who has had some difficult times but has actually found the the found a way forward, found your way of mm-hmm. dealing with it, and the hope is that by by sharing some of what 
you did, other people might think that that was a route that they could take or might feel inspired by it. Um, we'll come on to talk about how you ended up finding kind of support and help. But first of all, let's talk about, um, well, let's touch on when you've struggled. Um, when have been some of the points that you've particularly hit hit a low patch, Dylan? Um, probably the lowest point, I think, was when obviously I split from my son's mother um, and have to, had to leave the obviously family home and stayed with my, my um, friend. And I think at the time, it's just my head wasn't there. I, just, I wasn't eating right. I wasn't sleeping properly. You know, it was a nice sunny day like today, but I'd rather just have the curtains closed and be away from everyone just in darkness, you know. And it was just a, a real, I guess, emotionless time, if that makes sense. I didn't know where I was, who I was, you know. And the worst of it was being a dad at the time as well. I, I mentally didn't think I could look after my own son, which was probably one of the lowest points I've ever been. And so what that, that made you feel even worse about yourself yeah. because you, you thought, I can't even be a dad. I, I thought at the time that, you know, if I can't look after myself, how can I look after this little boy? And that was the, the hardest. The hardest challenge at the time was, you know, was basically saying, you know, I, I'm barely eating myself. How am I meant to, you know, look after this little human and make sure he's safe and secure when mentally I, I don't feel that way? Did you recognise at the time that you were depressed? Were you able to kind of...? N not at the time. I think looking back on it now, yes. But at the time, I just thought I was maybe heartbroken, upset and stuff like that. But I think looking back on it, it was signs of depression. And I think, you know, at the time, I was maybe too proud to speak to my flatmate at the time and just say, look, I'm, I'm struggling, really struggling. Um, you know, what can we do? And in fairness to him at the time, he got me out and about and you know we, we went out and like today we went out on nice walks and stuff like that. I guess instead of saying right you're not well why don't we get a drink he, he, he'd physically see I wasn't well so we went out and you know basically you know got out and about and in the city and about and just enjoyed life a wee bit you know so. He said too proud to to tell him and share with him what was was going on for you What's, what's underlying that kind of pride, do you think? Because I'm sure that's something that a lot of guys will get and understand. But, but what, what were you worried of? What, were you, what did you think he'd think he was your pal? I Is your pal? Yeah, <laughs> I, I, think, I think it was judgment at the time. As maybe I thought in my head, I was spindling situations in my head thinking, oh, he's going to think, well, man up, you know, do this, do that. And it just... It was a kind of, how do you approach the situation? And that was the hardest point, was just saying, well, how am I going to begin to tell him, look, you're really not in a good place, or I'm not in a really good place, like, can you help me out? You know, um, and it was just, yeah, it was just trying to approach the situation and see how, how best he would react to it. But at the time, it, I didn't feel that he was going to react the way I thought he was. Man up's a really interesting um, phrase to use there, because I bet, that is in so many heads, even saying to yourself, oh, come on, just get over yourself, just man up, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but it's, and I guess it reflects what you were thinking. Yeah. And we so often put on other people <laughs> yeah, <laughs> what exactly. we're thinking about ourselves. And maybe maybe that's at the heart of it, that it's how we, we beat ourselves up mm -hmm. and then we assume that other people will feel about us the way we're feeling about us. Um, I know you've had a more recent um, difficult patch. Mm -hmm. um, tell me about that because that led on to you getting some some help, and yeah. I think the fact that you managed to step towards getting some therapy um, is is really interesting and important. So tell me about the more recent battle you've so had. So last year, um, basically, I was going through some court situation with um, to regarding my son and mentally it floored me like it just the emotions raw emotions that kind of resurfaced from way back to stuff that happened in my childhood and so forth was just overwhelming and it got to a point where i was at work all day i just wanted to go home lock my way so i locked myself away in my bedroom i was 
not the greatest part in terms of fiance. You know, it was very moody, mood swings were really bad, you know, and it basically led us to breaking point as a relationship. We nearly split up over it. And I knew things had to change. So basically I <coughs> um would seek out obviously advice from my grandmother and she basically says, Why don't we look at a therapist? So somebody wasn't emotionally attached to the situation that I guess I wouldn't feel judgment to say, look, I'm struggling at the moment and I don't know how to express my feelings. I'm expressing them the wrong way instead of telling, you know, somebody I love so much that I can't even tell her properly how I feel, you know, is wrong. Because I feel that, you know, our loved ones are the ones we need to talk to, you know, our friends, our families, all these kind of but at the time I just couldn't and it literally drove the relationship to, to near enough breaking point so it was just I knew things had to change so um, I went and seen a therapist I think it's really um, I'm really impressed that you had the, the insight to kind of see that unless you did something really quite radical mm -hmm. that that you weren't going to be able to save the relationship and yeah. I think that that takes a lot of insight um, I'm interested that you went down the route of getting a therapist. I think for lots of us, that's quite an intimidating and difficult leap yeah. to, to think about taking. So how did you even get to the point of that? Did you go to a GP? You know, how did you find a therapist and, and end up at their door? Um, basically, my grandmother comes from an NHS background, so she had a lot of contacts. So we basically um, spoke over a weekend of just getting a gathering of maybe 10 different therapists we thought right and we didn't know where we were moving it was like a needle in the haystack we didn't know who was good who wasn't good so we we're like well we'll just go with maybe that one you know <laughs> and and see how it goes so yeah it was just a very weird situation because it was like right we'll go with this person we'll see how it basically do two or three sessions see how they are see how you feel and then we'll take it from there what was it like that first time when you went to a therapist? I'll, I'll share this. You can think about that for two seconds. I'll share. I went, I went to see a therapist myself. Mm -hmm. And I remember turning up at her door. And I sat down and I was sitting in my head thinking, I've no idea how we're going to fill the next hour because I've nothing to say to you. And I don't even know why I'm here. And, you know, this is all a waste of time. Yeah. And then an hour later, having not stopped talking, <laughs> I thought, oh. And she said, would you like another session? And I said, yeah, I think I will. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think the approach the first time, it was, it was weird because it was still lockdown. So obviously everything was done over Teams and so forth. So it was kind of not that kind of, I guess, intense where you're going to see someone physically in person. But it was, I think the initial trying to get the ball rolling was very hard. And it was just trying to kind of, so she wanted to see a pinpoint, instead of saying, right, let's go all in, pick a point in your life where you think has triggered something in your emotion. So we started with that, but I noticed after the first session, it mentally drained me. Like, and it got, and in fairness, looking back, my fiance was completely right at the time, because I still had my, I had my own house, um, and she says, look, you know, if the sessions is really intense, just you're probably best staying at home because we don't want the whole house feeling everything. And I, I, I completely, see, I look back and I think she was completely bang on. Um, cause so some, obviously unlocked a lot. Yeah, I mean, there was a lot of emotion that I think I'd maybe put to the back of my mind and it was really intense. And it, honestly, I was just emotionally, I guess after the session, it was like I'd gone into a daydream, you know, and it was just, I wasn't there. That sounds quite difficult to go through. Yeah, I mean, it was... I mean, it went on for about three or four months, but see, by the end of it, it was, it was like light at the end of the tunnel. It was just astonishing how this person that, and the, I think the greatest thing with therapists is they don't say much. They say little things that trigger you to basically unload how you're feeling. Um, and, you know, the little thing, and honestly, I think probably each session she maybe said two sentences at most, and that's the greatest thing, and I probably spoke for near 45 minutes every time. Which is amazing, isn't it? Because mm -hmm. you've gone from a point of not speaking, you couldn't speak to your fiance when you'd been you know, depressed the first time, you couldn't speak to one of your best mates, and then suddenly here you are with a complete stranger 
and it's like Bleh. yeah this is like ver- word vomit you know but yeah it's just it was absolutely surreal but honestly i c- couldn't thank her enough for for what she done um i mean don't, don't get it wrong i'm still getting to that kind of point of being i'm not perfect you know but i'm definitely a lot better than what it was you know so a friend of mine recently said to me um i suggested they 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 maybe talk to a therapist Mm -hmm. because they were struggling and they were really skeptical about it and they said i know me best therapist doesn't know me they can't change anything what can they possibly offer me that you know I should know how to do this myself. And I wondered whether you felt skeptical of how it would run when you first approached it. I suspect my pal's attitude is is quite common. Yeah, I mean, I think it's quite funny though how you say she knows herself because it is true though, because therapy is about unlocking your own emotion. So I think um, I didn't know what was going to come out of it because I knew if it didn't come out good, my relationship was over. So it was kind of, you know, and mentally it was about saving that at the same time as my own sanity and just, um, so I think just talking naturally, not being forced upon and just talking naturally and letting the kind of emotions and I guess trauma come out, it kind of helped a lot with that. So, but there was parts of me I found out about myself talking if that makes sense like it wasn't even she didn't even do anything it was just basically me talking and then the more comfortable I felt it was just like do you know what I'm talking about things that I would have never talked about and there's some things I told my therapist that I've never told any of my family which is absolutely surreal do you know what I mean so it's just I think it's amazing what therapy can do and what I would say is if anyone is struggling go and see a therapist because it is one of the greatest things ever it's tough it's hard it's a it's emotional but it's worth it how quickly did you feel it made a difference to you um because i mean it sounds like in in spite of the fact that it was unlocking all this emotion Mm -hmm. and and quite mentally difficult by the sounds of things that was also yeah, you, you must have been able to see the gains, otherwise why would you stick with it? Because you were in pain to begin with. Yeah. And <laughs> you know I, th- I think it was hard because it wasn't like a it, it wasn't just oh there's three sessions, I'm 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 fixed, if that makes sense. It kind of it went like a roller coaster. There was some sessions I'd come out feeling fantastic, and other sessions I would feel really down. And I think it was it was actually towards the end, I guess when it came to the point where the sessions there was we weren't talking about much. So when it came, how do you feel today? I feel actually all right, you know, I feel good. And that's where it came to the point where I realized, you know what, you're actually in a much better place than you were. So that's for me was the turning point is I went from talking constantly for her to tell me that the session is over to then basically going in and saying, well, we're not talking about much, you know. I know the experience is clearly, I mean, it it clearly helped you, Mm -hmm. it's also, made you go from not being able to speak about how you were feeling to talking to a therapist talking to your fiance talking to me Mm -hmm. and we've never met before yeah (laughs) (laughs) it certainly unlocked something dylan i'm impressed by all this has it also unlocked a change in how you how you talk to your pals not just about how you feel Mm -hmm. but how you think they may or be struggling I with think life. it's made me <clears throat> more conscious to you know I play football with a lot of good mates you know and I think the biggest thing is and you, you, nobody's a mind reader you can't say oh he's not but you always check in your mates you know always text pals now and again if I haven't seen for a while you're alright you're doing alright because at the end of the day they might not be doing alright they might not tell you they're, they're feeling down but as long as, you, as long as I know I'm constantly checking in to make sure you know, are you okay? I mean, there's, but you know, obviously playing a football team, there's banter and all that kind of stuff, and it's natural, but deep down I care for every single one of them, and, you know, if anything was to ever happen to them, you know, it would be devastating. So if we can try and talk up and have the stigma of trying to speak up, it would be, you know, it would help, but even my family, if they're ever feeling down or that, I'll always be there for them, you know, because I would never want someone to feel down, worthless, you know, not wanting to be here it's just you know so yeah it's yeah 
therapy's been quite dramatic for you by the sound of things. Yeah, it's been a, a tornado of an experience, to say the least. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, we'll continue with Dylan's story in just a sec, but if listening to this is striking a chord with you, don't forget it's okay not to be okay. If you need someone to talk to, you can text Mikey's line on 07786 20 77 55. That's 07786 20 77 55 or contact them via Messenger, Web Chat or Twitter. Sunday to Thursday, 6pm to 10pm. Friday to Saturday, 7pm to 7am. Now Dylan, I know by day mm-hmm. you're a salesman. Yep. But by night, you've been setting up your own business. And yeah. off the back of all this, you decided to do something different mm-hmm. and help support local charities. So, yes. so tell us about that. Um, off the back of obviously coming out of a traumatic experience but feeling a lot better mindset, it was one of these weird ideas that came. Now, obviously, I come from very uh, an active and sporty background. I like clothing like everyone. And I kind of just had this kind of light bulb moment to think, well, why don't I combine helping others and clothing at the same time? Right. So that's where I created Active Clothing. And my main focal point was, my main charity that I want to help out was Mikey's Line, but also help out charities within Inverness and the surrounding areas to basically say, look, I'm here to help you guys with whatever you need, fundraising, you know, if I'm you know, donations to certain products that I've got coming out because, you know, I want to make a difference and help people out, you know, so. So how does it work? So is it a, a, a percentage from some of the stuff Yeah, that you, so basically you if make? we have a percentage, like this month we've got, sorry, the month just passed, we had 10% went to Maisie's fundraiser, which basically, you know, is a fantastic charity and we've got another donation coming to them this Saturday. Um, in December, we teamed up with CM Boots and we basically did a giveaway raffle. So basically each person entered, I think it was £5, and all the basically the entries went direct to Mikey's line. And we managed to raise a good substantial amount. I think it was maybe £250 in a day. And it just went straight to them, which is amazing to think that, you know, two local lads could just quickly get that much raised. And it was a real boost, you know, to to see how much money you can raise in such a short, short space of time. We've got um, limited edition Mikey's Line t-shirts coming out soon. I'm hoping soon. <laughs> but basically we're going to donate £5 of each sale towards to Mikey's Line, you know. So that's a, a big, big thing. So we're kind of, we're trying to change it up. We had hoodies last year for Mikey's Line, which were very successful. Um, so we do t-shirts this year we might do something else next year we're just trying to kind of do it a bit differently to I guess your bigger brands but I read not long ago that giving something back is actually can be really important for for your mental health yeah you know it it feels good it feels good to do something for other people yeah Um, and I wondered whether this is another part of your armory mm-hmm. that you've discovered that you know doing this also keeps you mentally th- strong yeah i think you're completely right i think this was um knowing that you're helping people out in any form shape or you know it's just you know i'll do my utmost best as the business is growing i'll make sure i'm helping you know as many people as I can you know if, if and I've always offered to people if people are struggling feel free to drop us a message on the website through Instagram Facebook more you know we're more than happy to speak to you you know we're, we're not trained in the field but certainly if you just want to speak to someone and say look I'm not doing all right my number's always open to people to speak and just say look well you know I've been through this stuff as well I mean you'll you'll come out of this do you know what I mean and if you don't feel comfortable speaking to me you can maybe speak direct to Mikey's line you know so yeah, and I think it's, I think it's brilliant where you've got to by the sounds of things. How do you? I mean, do you still have to keep tabs on where you're at? Do you still check in with yourself? Um, yeah, I mean, there, you know, the odd day I will feel a bit, you know, but it's not to the extent it was. I might wake up and feel I'm just not a bit mentally. So I kind of recharge myself and think, right, you know, just how how are you going to approach the day? And I always feel that if if a positive 
attitude, you know, will have a positive outcome. And that's, you know, how I feel most days now is, you know, I'm healthy, you know, sun shining, you know, basically I've got good people around me. That I, I look at the positives rather than negatives. I think before I would use the negatives more than the positives. So it's just about approaching it day by day. And what I would say to people is if you're having a bad day, it's a bad day, it's not a bad life. You know, just take it day by day. That's my biggest thing to people is if you're struggling, it might be a bad day, but let's move on to the next or try and move on to the next. If, you're, if you are struggling, speak to someone I even speak to myself if you want to, you know, it's just try and speak to your close loved ones and honestly don't feel judgment because everyone, you know, will listen. And everyone has bad days. Yeah, exactly. That's that's the biggest thing, you know, I think we're, I don't, I don't think I know one person that hasn't had a bad day. You of know. course not. So, yeah. Tell us more about where we can get um, information on active clothing. So the website is um, www.activeclothing.com. You can find us on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook. Um, we'll be doing events throughout probably later on in the year. So feel free to obviously come on the website and you know basically support us. You know. Well, Dylan, it has been brilliant talking to you. The thing I am going to take away from this and put in my pocket is your saying: "It is a bad day." It is not a bad life mm -hmm. and I love that that's that's in there I'm keeping that one now that's not mine so I'm not you know I'm not copywriting <laughs> that but I, I did heard hear it that from you. yeah <laughs> <laughs> a reminder of Mikey's line if you or someone you know needs help or advice you can text 0786 20 77 55 or contact them via messenger web chat or twitter Sunday to Thursday 6 p.m to 10 p.m Friday to Saturday, 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. Now here's Shona McPherson from Mikey's Line with a few thoughts for you to mull over. I think the key thing that I noticed with Dylan's sharing is how he moved from having kind of quite a fixed sense of who he was and what he could and couldn't share with other people. And uh, it was discussed uh, about pride, about not knowing how to begin, begin the conversation and, and his words, I'm not someone who talks about mental health or something along those lines and that self-judgment about uh, I should be able to fix this myself, I should be able to be a man and how he moved from having those beliefs about himself and that way of seeing himself to having the courage to be curious enough to talk to his granny about seeing a counsellor and then having those initial uh, sessions with a counsellor to being on this podcast and being really open that he's had difficulties and struggles with his mental health and and encouraging all of us to have those conversations and I think that is indicating a, something that's common to all of us as people that we can have quite a fixed sense of who we are a fixed sense of self, this is who I am, this is what I do, this is what I don't do, I'm not someone who talks about these things. And if we are able to sort of be curious about ourselves and slightly challenge that fixed sense of self, we can realise that we're becoming, we're all becoming, and we can try and do things differently. So if you're listening to this and you think, oh, I'm just not somebody that would talk about things, I really invite you to go, well, could I be someone that talks about things? Just because that's not something that's popular maybe in our culture or in my family or whatever it is. And the other final thing to mention from the, the podcast, Dylan's experience of counselling was quite specific to him and, and he made the observation that um, his counsellor hardly spoke in the sessions and I think he said, or, you know, um, sort of at, at most they said two sentences within the whole session. And... Um, that therapist may have a particular way of working with him as an individual and need a lot to share or that might have been their particular style. But if you're listening to this and going, oh my gosh, I don't want to go to therapy if, if it's a quiet room and only two sentences are said, that's not always the case. Uh, therapists are different, they have different ways of working and also would be tailoring their interventions very much to, to what you tell them and what you need. So not to uh, take away from Dylan's experience in any way, shape or form, but 
so full disclosure, I work as a counsellor myself and uh, usually I would have more than two sentences <laughs> to say. Not yeah, So that's the main thing, two things to say. And yeah, if, if any of this has, has resonated with you and you feel ready or you, you think you want to speak to somebody, please do reach out to Mikey's line or someone you trust or to a counsellor. Thank you for listening. A huge thanks to Shona and all the team at Mikey's Line for the work they do and to Dylan, of course, for sharing his story with me. This episode was sponsored by D&D Paving Limited. Please do like, share and comment about the podcast. And if you want to get involved by sponsoring an episode or by telling your story like Dylan has, get in touch with Mikey's Line. Speaking of Suicide is an adventurous audio production. The music is Nana by Tom Ireland.